And the next step to think about is Hawaii, because Hawaii imports nearly all of their energy. They have a significant proportion, though, of wind energy, which is causing destabilization of their electric grid because it's not predictable. And there isn't an effective way to store the energy with the uh, intermittent periods where the energy is available by wind, and the, uh, the grid can't use that in form of demand. So an area like Hawaii, if you look at Oahu, where most of it, Hawaii's population resides, about 20 to 25 stations could give you a fully functional, mature station infrastructure. It would also cover the major military bases on the island of Oahu. And it's a, a very good launching point for a technology like fuel cells because you can have a contained fleet that cannot drive outside of its area of infrastructure coverage. We can also leverage technologies like Hawaii's, the gas company has. They are the natural gas provider on the island. They have 100 miles of natural gas pipeline that right now flows 5% content of hydrogen. And we're working with the gas company to develop technologies to extract the hydrogen at points where it's needed and put it into stations, eliminating some of the costly transportation costs that are needed to put the hydrogen in the stations. And so coming back to this, as you start to look at all these different technologies, fuel cells and hydrogen are an inter interesting intersection point between energy, transportation, and the electric grid. And Germany is seeing this with wind energy, which they're using hydrogen as a way to store and buffer the energy on the electrical grid. This is one area where most of their wind turbines are. You can see the irregularity in the wind availability. It goes from very high to nearly nothing in the matter of days. And the only ways that they have to store the energy right now are through pumped hydro, and that's only the equivalent of minutes on the electrical grid. So something more dense is needed. They've looked at compressed air in underground salt caverns, and unfortunately that's about half as effective at storing energy. But hydrogen can give a 600 megawatt hour storage, which will give you days on the grid. That's an important enabler to wind energy on the grid. And this is looking at some El Paso, Texas data and just shows the same kind of irregularity both in wind and in solar, which is more predictable, but also has on and off periods on a 24-hour cycle. You need to buffer that. The ways to buffer are either batteries or hydrogen. Both are needed. Batteries are very good short-term storage devices, but the hydrogen is needed for longer term and is much more cost-effective than batteries for that same effect. Germany's doing this. They have this one city that's in uh, northeastern Germany which is taking this complete approach with energy storage as well as renewable energy generation. And they're coupling that with the transportation portion of the, of the industry. So I want to leave you with just these few key points. One is that it takes about 50 years to change an energy economy over to something like hydrogen. So we need to consider the requirements now and start down that pathway. It takes batteries and fuel cells and biofuels and advancements to conventional internal combustion engines to meet the requirements that we have going forward. And we need to get through the learning cycles quickly to make these cost effective. The technology is now commercially viable for hydrogen fuel cells, but it needs to come down in cost to become widespread and high volume. The infrastructure is also achievable, but we need momentum. We can't give up on the momentum that we've already established in places like Hawaii and in, the, in Southern California. And we need to push that forward and develop cost-effective infrastructure that can supply hydrogen at an affordable price. And then also, we need good, tight cooperation between government and industry, like the model that's existing in Germany with the H2 mobility template. And that will help establish uh, an affordable and effective infrastructure, as well as helping provide pull-through for the vehicles when they arrive. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charles, for your very interesting presentation. The next speaker is Mr. Ikutoshi Matsumura. Mr. Ikutoshi Matsumura led JX Nippon Oil and Energy's fuel cell technology business as a board member for over 10 years. In 2008, as Nippon Oil and Energy's executive VP, he established Inyo CellTech, which is one of the largest fuel cell manufacturers in Japan. Since his retirement in July 2010, Mr. Matsumura is working as a representative director for Japan Fuel Cell Association in support of Japanese fuel cell industry development. He serves on various advisory committees in the Japanese government and has been contributing to new energy policy for promoting fuel cells and hydrogen in Japan. 
Mr. Matsumura obtained his Master's of Science and Engineering degree in Applied Chemistry from Tokyo Institute of Technology in 1970. Mr. Matsumura. Dr. Bora, uh, thank you for your bright introduction. Uh, my name is Ikutoshi Matsumura from JX Nippon Oil Energy Corporation, Japan. I'm very honored to be invited to this seminar and given a chance to make a speech on the current situation of fuel cells development and scenario towards the hydrogen society in Japan. First, let me give you the briefing of our company, JX Holdings, and then I'll explain why we develop the residential fuel cells as well as the present situation of the development in Japan, and deployment of fuel cell vehicles with hydrogen infrastructure. Finally, I will show you JX vision towards the future low carbon society. First of all, let me introduce our company, JX Holdings. JX Holdings was established in April this year by merging two of the major oil and resource companies in Japan, Nippon Oil Corporation and Nippon Mining Holdings. JX Holdings consists of three core business companies, petroleum refining and marketing company, oil, natural gas, Explo exploration and production company, and metals business company. The corporate brand Ineos of Homer Nippon Oil has been succeeded to JX Nippon Oil and Energy. Regarding JX Holdings, its annual sales will be $106 billion, and its profit is estimated $2.6 billion in 2010. JX Holdings is the largest company in the energy and resource business field in Japan. Next, I'd like to explain why we develop residential fuel cells. This is a compression of total energy efficiency between conventional th uh, thermal power plant and residential fuel cells, we call inner farm in Japan. As shown in this slide, through the thermal power plant, we can only use 40% of input energy at home because of heat loss and transmission loss. On the other hand, through inner farm, we can use as much as 85% of input energy because we can produce both electricity and heat at the same time. Therefore, we believe N-Farm is the best card for CO2 reduction at home. Let me introduce how much CO2 we can reduce at home through N-Farm. If we introduce N-Farm to a standard family home in Japan, CO2 emission from the home can be reduced by about 1,200 kilograms per year. Compared to the conventional energy system, it corresponds to as much as 38% reduction. There are 27 million single-family homes in Japan. If any farm is introduced to all of these homes, CO2 emission can be reduced by 35 million tons per year. It corresponds to as much as 20% of the CO2 emission from the residential sector in Japan. I'd like to explain the large-scale demonstration project in Japan, which was led by METI, Japanese Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry. This table shows the installation number of fuel cell system at the large-scale demonstration project started from 2005 and ended in 2008 in Japan. 16 energy companies and five fuel cell manufacturers participated in this project and installed more than 3, 
thousand fuel cell units over, all over the Japan. JX installed more than 1,500 units. That was about 45% of total units. The cost of fuel cell units were fully subsidized by METI, and total budget for this project was about $140 million. The field test data from this project were utilized to de develop the technology for commercialization of any farm, such as cost reduction, durability, reliability, and performance improvement. As part of the large-scale demonstration project, 150 N-farms were intensively installed by JX in Fukuoka Hydrogen Town. We believe that Fukuoka Hydrogen Town is the world's first model city for hydrogen energy. Let me introduce to you the improved performance data at the large-scale demonstration project. This graph shows the power generation efficiency and heat recovery efficiency for more than 600 fuel cell units from 2005 to 2007 fiscal year, fiscal year model. As shown here, power generation FCC was improved from 26.6% in 2005 to 30.5% percent in 2007 on the average. Also, heat reco recovery efficiency was greatly improved from 37.5 percent in 2005 to 45.5 percent in 2007 on the average. The improvement of fuel cell stock and reformers, as well as reduction of BOP power consumption contributed to these improvements. We commercialized in a farm in 2009, last year, based on the performance data from the large-scale demonstration project. At the timing of commercialization of residential fuel cell, we named it in a farm, in a farm as industry unified brand name for faster and better dis dissemination of fuel cell products. Any farm means we can have energy farm at home to produce electricity and heat. JX is now commercializing any farm fueled by natural gas and LPG with rated power as 750 watt to match the uh, uh, hot water demand at Japanese average home. Regarding any farms market in Japan, you can see the annual sales market for 2.7 billion uh, million boiler units fueled by LPG, natural gas, and kerosene. So if the price of any farm would be $5,000 total sales amount would be $13.5 billion, and it will be quite a large potential market even in Japan. This is a market prediction in Japan for any farm. In 2009, when we launched the market, the sales volume was 5,000 units. We can't expect to have big sales number due, due to its uh, uh, high cost for a few years to come. However, by 2015, we expect to achieve the cost target, which is the same cost level of the conventional energy system. As a result, any farm will spread and the market will grow to about 600,000 sales annually.